are watching. Canada has had another victory in the cannabis world. Another judge, a second judge in the past six months in Ontario has dismissed three individuals on simple possession charges. This is very important to Canadians. That is twice now this year that simple possession charges have been dismissed. A website recently has been created called The Pot Law Has Fallen by Professor Doug Hutchinson, who helped facilitate and paid for the three individuals in this past case their legal fees, and we thank him very much for allowing this to happen. Now, if anybody in Canada has a simple possession charge, please have a look at the website, The Pot Law Has Fallen. And of course, we'll put it up as usual at the end of the show. There are, there's a package there that would help you and others and inform you of how you can get your charges dropped in this country. But it has to be under a certain amount. Now, Canadians, I have to tell you this, and I'm very disappointed. We are under attack by the Conservative government. We need help. Oh my goodness. The Conservative government would like to put anybody that grows one plant, one cannabis plant, in jail for six months. Yes, six months. A mandatory minimum sentence of six months they would like to impose on Canadian citizens if they grow one plant. How shameful. The Conservative government is out to destroy cannabis users. They want to destroy the cannabis culture. Now, all of you need to get active. Right away, we do not want to see any of these jail terms imposed on innocent citizens of this country who would like to use this plant either as medicine or, yes, for recreational purposes. There is no reason to be rebuilding jails. This is what will happen. 700 people in BC alone will be arrested per year because of this law. And that would mean having to build a new jail in Canada or in BC. Just in BC, a new jail. How ridiculous is that? How many millions, if not billions of dollars will be wasted? Useless, absolutely useless. Now, to house one prisoner alone is $80,000 per year. Add that up. 700 would be arrested in BC, times that by 80,000. That money would be better spent on maybe helping Canada take care of its dirty little secret and that dirty little secret, of course, has been Vancouver's downtown east side. A UN official recently made a trip here. And what he saw was hundreds, if not thousands, of poverty-stricken, homeless, addicted souls that need help. They don't need to be arrested. They need help. We need facilities opened to give them the proper means to get on with their lives and get back into society. This is very unfair. A $64 million drug war Stephen Harper wants to impose on us. It doesn't work. We have seen the US drug war and the failure, the complete failure. And it is time as Canadians that we stand up to a US style government that Stephen Harper is trying to impose on us. Please. One plant, remember this, one plant will put you in jail for six months if you were not a legal person like myself. Now, how many people would that be? Considering there are only 1,800 in Canada that are actually legally licensed to either produce or possess or both cannabis in Canada for medicinal reasons. So that puts how many people at risk? We've got about 30 million minus 1,800. Figure it out. Now, I had a very good opportunity this past week to meet the leader of the Green Party of Canada, Elizabeth May. And I asked her what her policy was, or what her party's policy is, on cannabis prohibition. And she told me face to face 
that her party wants to legalize cannabis. Yes, the Green Party wants full legalization, regulated, taxed, full legalization. Now, we have the NDP, who a long time ago had said that they would help us. Now, Jack Layton, unfortunately, has gone back on his word, and I'm very disappointed by that. The BC Marijuana Party has been supporting the NDP and promoting the NDP for years. But now we have to take another look. The Liberals are not doing anything for us. The Conservatives are the devil themselves. Let's face it. But now we have the leader of the Green Party and her constituents wanting full legalization. I encourage you all to take a look at every single party and who you support. And I encourage everybody to talk to their local city council, talk to the policymakers of our country, write those letters. You must take action. Make the phone calls to Justice Minister Nicholson. It's very important. We do not want to see any more people go to jail in this country. We do not want to see any more people victimized by crack, cocaine, and the problem that we have on the downtown east side. It's a terrible situation going on. And from now on, I beg all of you, have a look around you. Talk to your neighbors. Educate the people who need to be educated. We need to stop the corruption. There is so much corruption going on. And I beg you all, it has to stop. Because we are in a situation where, yes, how many of our friends might be going to jail because of cannabis? You will be seeing some footage of the, of the meeting I attended the past couple of days with the Green Party. And also, there will be some footage of the downtown east side. Think about it. Think about the money being wasted. Think about all those commercials that you see. Please drink responsibly. What does that mean? In Canada, we see commercials that say, please drink responsibly. That's encouraging people to consume alcohol. Why don't we encourage people to educate themselves with choice and stop the madness? You see behind me all the great magazines that I promote continuously. New edition of Cannabis Culture, new edition of Skunk, Weed World. Jeff Tech has got a fantastic article in Weed World talking about the BC3. And, of course, Treating Yourself magazine. And don't forget Christmas is coming. Harry Pothead and the Marijuana Stone. What a fun read. You can see I'm also wearing a red medicinal t-shirt. How Canadian and how Christmas can you get? Come on, everybody. Support your cannabis community. Please. Have a wonderful day. Happy Thanksgiving to all those Americans out there. Please keep sending those emails. Please keep writing those letters. I'm answering all of you all the time. Get on the websites. Get on the forums that I discuss in every single show. Very important. Keep being active. Show your support. Thank you very much. And keep watching Michelle's Medicinal Marijuana for all the latest news, controversies, and hey, beautiful plants too. And everybody knew what they wanted. There'd be nothing, nothing then. People would do what they wanted.
agreement of them, which of course has not happened. So incredible day. It's very good. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hi, Ms. May. Oh, John, you call me Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth, I want to apologize because I'm asking this question not so much for everybody here because everybody knows our policy. It's for the people that I'm trying to move. We live in the province that the United Nations says has the highest concentration of cannabis users in the world in Canada and they live in BC. Today we heard that it stops breast cancer, cannabis. Today we heard that if you got one plant, Harper's going to put you in jail for a mandatory minimum six months. It's an issue that I fought for four years and was on the executive of the NDP. Quit as I found them as hypocrites after the convention in Quebec where I had to challenge the presidency of the NDP to bring up the word after working for Jacqueline for four years. I've been in the Greens for one year. I've got a legal medical marijuana user that's president, vice president of the marijuana party. We've worked for 10 years in this province, set up political parties. I know you brought out that release for us and it was just incredible that you brought that out October the 11th because if you think about it, what's happened in the polls in this province since then? Ah, yes. So what I'm asking... <laughs> nothing about the proliferation of drugs, the drugs are there. We're talking about is the only sane party that's addressing it. As I've said before, there's never been a prison built that they have not found illegal drugs in. How are we going to keep them out of your schools? We're winning in the polls because of this issue. These are Canadian citizens. If it's a medical issue, so be it. But I'm asking you, like we asked Jack Layton when he won the leadership of the NDP, if he would do something. Yeah. All the leaders of the NDP were going to do something. He caved. Now, you're going to get a chance in the leaders' debate because we're going to get you in there. Yes. Yeah. We're asking you to stand up and say our policy yeah. in the debate. Yeah. No penalty for adult use of cannabis and get these well, 800,000 no people. Because it would be legal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all of this nonsense about getting tough on crime, playing people's fears. There is not a crime wave in this country. There are specific pockets of issues that need to be addressed, but this is not a crime wave. And their focus on getting tough on crime with mandatory minimum sentences and things that we know don't work. We wanted also, this is the, uh, by the way, National Restorative Justice Week, and we put out a press release on that. We want to look at this in a way that actually addresses the problem and doesn't create divisions for the purpose of fear mongering in the style of George Bush so that Stephen Harper can get Canadians afraid of their neighbors yeah. and thus voting for a policy that's both uh, intolerant and wrong-headed. Yeah.